yourselves. Yeah, so good morning, everyone. Uh, Sri Subramaniam, lead the item product line of business. Deepa? Uh, good morning, everybody. Excited to be here uh, and partnering with uh, Sri and John. Uh, Deepak Kalingiwadi, I'm the uh, Senior Director of uh, Products for the Security Operations Portfolio. Amazing, guys. Thank you so much for being here. I'm pretty sure that everyone else is going to be excited about this uh, this uh, fantastic session today. Now, safe harbor notice, um, just we're going to make sure uh, to stick to the existing products today as much as we can, but uh, we could still reference the future of our products. So please make sure that you're aware of that. Uh, the safe harbor notice applies to the content for today's presentation. So today's agenda is going to be organized in this way. We're going to have a an overview of the value of item and SecOps together. We're going to go through an, uh, an overview of ServiceNow SecOps offering and the capabilities. We're going to see a couple of demos and eventually, as usual, we're going to have a few minutes at the end of this session for a Q&A session. And now, um, without further saying, please make sure you interact with all of us in the Q&A section. And I'm going to hand it over to Shri. Fantastic. Uh, so thank you for the opportunity, team. Uh, uh, let me share my screen. We'll take you to a couple of narrative decks and we'll show you some demos. Uh, so firstly, ServiceNow is known as the platform of platform. Uh, we support a lot of enterprise business with a unified data model that's delivering workflows across uh, uh, the landscape, uh, driving critical outcomes uh, for your business. But behind this uh, workflow, the magic of creating a data platform uh, that is driving an outcome is super important. And ServiceNow uh, has always been uh, no known for building that um, configuration management database uh, with a multi-source approach of uh, curating data from existing data providers and uh, offering the best-in-class discovery technology that can go and collect dependency data, relationship information uh, from multiple sources. So bringing these two dimensions of data together where the reconciliation reconciles and providing that context uh, to build that uh, data lake for your ID. And if I look at uh, the existing service graph connectors, uh, you can clearly craft a, a, a set of market segmentation where Either it's your monitoring tools, security tools, uh, your end user computing uh, package manager solutions like SCCM, Intune, Jamov. Uh, we have connectors for most of the very well known tool chain in this market. Uh, and this way, like we are creating, developing, continuously maintaining these integrations, bringing the data into our solution and then reconciling with the existing discovery data so that you get the best-in-class view of your asset data. Uh, and that can help uh, to drive multiple outcomes. On top of it, like we also add context, uh, which we call this as like tying your infrastructure IT to the business. So when you look at an asset, you would not see this as an, a database running on a vCenter, uh, but you would see that the database that's running on a vCenter it's serving your logistics systems or serving your line of business. Uh, and that context is super important, especially when you deal with uh, uh, security incidents, when you're dealing with uh, uh, vulnerabilities, zero day vulnerabilities that are announced and you know, you want to understand what is the real risk and uh, no impact are related to those assets. Uh, service now, uh, CMDB is sitting as a nucleus within this platform. Uh, we deliver multiple outcomes. Uh, and today, in particular, we are going to do a deep dive into the security outcome, which is, again, super important for our cyber teams, uh, uh, where uh, there is an, a sprawl of uh, tool chains available, but how ServiceNow is a key enabler in driving that outcome. And I will do deep dive into the data elements, and Deepak will uh, cover the workflow aspects uh, uh, where how this data will be effectively used to drive those uh, critical outcomes. So I call this as a data fabric, uh, uh, pretty much an integrated layer of connected IT because the same data that we collect and uh, we will be able to reconcile it and provide that context will be used across the portfolio of workflows. Either it's your typical service management use case like change incident or your security operations like incident response, vulnerability response, 
or your uh, you know your chasm strategy where you're going to learn today how ServiceNow can help uh, and know to drive that cyber asset resilience program or it's your application portfolio management or you're driving up your AI ops uh, event management strategy asset management that includes uh, software asset the hardware asset or your GRCs every single workflow needs the data and bringing this uh, you know multi-dimensional data reconciling and providing that context is uh, the foundational bedrock of, for all these workflows. Let me do deep into some of the discovery elements. Why discovery? So we all understand that the service graph can bring in a lot of inventory view of the landscape. But the purpose of many customers uh, adopting and pure player discovery solution is two things. One is you need to have complete visibility to your compute, network, storage, relationships, uh, connecting to your hypervisor solutions like vCenter, Hyper-V you know, Hyper or Nutanix, or uh, connecting to your multi-cloud, connecting to your uh, uh, load balancer technologies or your uh, uh, no current uh, Kubernetes or OpenShift ecosystem. So you need this uh, powerful capability that can crawl and bring that multi-dimensional data set from service Cloud, but also uh, you know, interrogating the existing infrastructure for data that is not typically visible uh, from the existing service graph providers. Uh, and uh, we also offer both agent-based and agentless. The agent-based offering called as an agent client collector that can be deployed into an endpoint or to the server estate. The agent provides uh, some fantastic capability, mainly for the security audience. Uh, you might not, you know, you might be aware of OS query, uh, which is again a fam famous daemon that uh, many of the security incident response tools uses. Agent Client Collector comes with an OS query that can be used for security incident response that can help you to enrich the data that you're collecting from uh, no, your CMDB perspective, both from your laptop endpoints and from the server infrastructure. Uh, we'll show a quick demo on this as well. The multi-cloud visibility, again, is super important for many customers. Uh, and this is a place like where we cater the needs of multiple personas uh, who are looking into these data sets. Uh, whether you are a discovery manager looking at uh, connecting to your multi-cloud, we provide both service graph approach and uh, the uh, pattern-based approach to collect this data. Uh, we provide a fantastic enablement platform for you to set the security standards during the time of provisioning uh, so that all the catalogs uh, can be approved uh, uh, by the security. You're not giving the uh, keys to the kingdom to the de decentralized SRE teams uh, where you still can have effective governance uh, in the provisioning process uh, where we offer a uh, catalog based offering that sits on top of Terraform or Ansible and we help in the governance play there. Uh, on the uh, discovery side, uh, uh, pretty much uh, know the data that we can collect from in the cloud estate, container estate is pretty um, you know, exhaustive. Uh, and in fact, uh, you know, in the demo, you will see some of the use cases, how this data will drive uh, those effective security outcomes. On the Kubernetes estate or OpenShift or pretty much anything that is running inside a container, uh, you need this visibility from the cyber security perspective. We have many banks asking, saying, can you uh, get that visibility inside the Docker image, collect all the software bill of materials, uh, but also to get visibility into that library level information is super important. Uh, we can absolutely support this use case for the cyber audience. Uh, so with that note, like the last one I have is uh, the certificate management uh, where uh, you might have uh, seen how uh, even digital certificates like TLS certificates, this visibility is super important for cyber teams. Uh, expiry of certificates have uh, not just an nightmare for your uh, uh, you know, service outages uh, and war room scenarios, but also uh, it is super important from cyber angle where uh, you know, an expired certificate has pretty much caused a lot of headaches uh, in terms of uh, uh, the hacks that we see in you know, today's enterprise world. Uh, so we have complete visibility to that as well. So with that note, uh, let me just like uh, ha you know, go into a quick demo mode and show you the power of discovery, what discovery can collect and crawl. As I said, we support both agent-based and agentless. Uh, the devil is always in the details, and that's where, like, if you look at 
the elements of what discovery collects just from the compute perspective, you'll have a lot of infrastructure data, operating system data, versions, uh, kernel information. But the most interesting thing for um, a cybersecurity team is the visibility into the installed software data, which is absolutely critical for driving a vulnerability response uh, program. A uh, lot of zero-day vulnerabilities are you know, coming into this ecosystem and you need to have a system of record uh, that can immediately give you uh, context on what is your uh, no attack uh, uh, you know, surface and what is your exposure and uh, you know, have a quick uh, uh, say on how to remediate uh, some of those critical zero-day vulnerabilities. Uh, on top of it, Discovery also collects uh, extended data set on running process traffic data which is again super important for the security audience and in fact one of the things uh, that we do with this data is like we apply machine learning we perform clustering analysis and immediately give you the context of what is connected to what like we what we call this as an ml based uh, service mapping where at any point in time you will have the complete visibility uh, to all the networking elements of uh, traffic of what process uh, from a server is talking to another process on the other server. If the maps are there, you will be able to curate a map uh, with few clicks. But even if the maps are not generated, the machine learning will analyze, will uh, find all the connections, potential service suggestions uh, that can be quickly added to the map. As I said, the service mapping context is super important for customers uh, you know, to get uh, that uh, business dimension to that infrastructure elements. Uh, but on top of it, when you think about even simple things like install software data, many inventory scanners can get the package manager information. But ServiceNow Discovery does uh, two levels uh, deep into this visa, where we can get information from process fingerprints, so looking into uh, the patterns that can go and interrogate and collect extended data set for software asset management or your vulnerability management use case. Even simple things like um, file-based discovery, uh, where we can crawl into the file system, collect necessary information uh, that are super important for your cyber uh, resiliency programs. Like uh, uh, a good example is like, you know, your log 4G, where uh, 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 no, if you have uh, uh, no these uh, elements uh, needed, like either it's Java or log 4G or any of those uh, files that are sitting in your uh, file systems, you will be able to search for those file systems, get to see where the file is located, what is the size, what version is deployed. And we also create install software data uh, based on the data sets. Uh, uh, we can pretty much uh, you know, collect this information from cloud, from containers, from your on-prem uh, you know, and your virtualized infrastructure. The, the critical uh, narrative that you have to take is like, when you think about a typical inventory scan it can collect a lot of those basic data elements but as i said even in the installed software world we can collect a lot of other extended data but when i see a, a simple compute in this case it's a linux server uh no from uh, my uh, vcenter environment the breadth and depth of data that you see like in terms of uh, you know your compute infrastructure what applications that are running uh where it is running uh you know in terms of esx host uh, or AWS infrastructure, you will have that context of dependency mapping information, which is in fact super important uh, when you are dealing with uh, cybersecurity incidents where you want to see those relationships in near real time. You want to see those uh, application contexts. Uh, you want to see uh, whether the compromised Linux server has an Oracle database, which is part of an, you know, an Azure or AWS stack, what the AMI images are being provisioned, who provision this virtual machine in terms of cloud service accounts and so on. So that entire context of dependency uh, is there in your uh, system. And we do this across like uh, your network estate, firewalls, load balances. Uh, uh, so a, a sample of uh, what we get from uh, firewall estate is like certain firewalls, like where you see the firmware version sometimes, I uh, know when the vulnerabilities are exposed, like no, you would always like wanted to see how many of my network switches uh, with certain iOS information, or you want to see uh, no track of like uh, firmware version, so we can get that visibility. But also, again, the dependency mapping, as I said, is super important uh, for the relationship mapping to understand the estate, to understand where it is located, who owns this, uh, uh, 
uh, what firewall policies are associated with this uh, and so on. A very powerful stack, uh, you know, getting into the cloud or container, uh, we get uh, extended data set, getting into the software decomposition, super important for your uh, no cyber security programs as well. So with that note, uh, a quick uh, overview of uh, uh, what we can do, right, in terms of uh, helping the cybersecurity program. Uh, but here in this call, uh, we want to do a deep dive into the CASA market, which is a cyber uh, no, attack surface management market, uh, where uh, many of the CASM players, uh, where they will look for integration points, whereas the CASM tool chain does not have uh, you know, a specialized discovery technology, right? They completely rely on the existing information. And, and this, here's the simple analogy where I would look for, like where uh, you are seeing an outside in view for your IT infrastructure where you can actually do some basic information like, hey, give me the servers, give me the uh, VMs and give me the inventory data from the package manager perspective. I think any third party uh, integrations uh, right, can provide this data set. But what you need uh, from the discovery is like getting inside uh, know this compute, collecting the file level information, process level information, traffic data, providing that service context, uh, uh, ability to interrogate with OS query and collect extended data set for your security team. Uh, so I think this analogy of outside in and inside view, right? It's super important when you think about your chasm strategy. And in the next few uh, slides, Deepak will introduce you to this market what we offer within this market, uh, but also how the Chasm product from ServiceNow primarily is using the item visibility data, both service graph data and the discovery data to drive critical outcomes. So with that note, uh, uh, Deepak, over to you. Thank you, Shri. I'm gonna share my uh, screen here. Do you see my window? Yeah, we can. All right, okay. Um, the, 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 as Shri mentioned right now, uh, the ServiceNow uh, platform uh, being a platform of one data model and one architecture uh, drives a lot of uh, synergies across IT. Uh, security being uh, one of those uh, areas where customers are already getting uh, great outcomes uh, by being on the uh, ServiceNow platform and using uh, uh, the bedrock of uh, uh, capabilities uh, built into IT operations uh, management. A very quick look at our portfolio today. Uh, the security operations portfolio helps customers uh, both on the reactive side and the proactive side of security operations. On the reactive side, we do security case management, which is lifecycle management of all security incidents uh, coming out of the enterprise, be it from the SOC or outside the SOC, uh, or in business function SOCs like fraud and uh, privacy, for example. And in the attack surface management, uh, we are the single platform of response for all kinds of uh, 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 attack findings, uh, be it vulnerabilities, misconfiguration, application code issues, or issues in the cloud and uh, OT environment, uh, all kind of you know covering different asset classes, uh, using technology services on the platform, and uh, leveraging uh, several uh, cross-functional intelligence capabilities, be it uh, our threat intel uh, module or be it the controls intel uh, capability that we have in security posture control that I'll uh, talk to you more about. And our goal is, hey, we will be that platform that will automate, connect, and uh, orchestrate enterprise uh, security posture. And today, uh, I'm super thrilled to kind of uh, share with you how you can supercharge your security outcomes by harnessing the synergy of ITOM uh, to do uh, two things, right? You know, you can merge robust automation capabilities that are uh, in ITOM with proactive threat detection capabilities uh, that are you're going to see in uh, security posture control to keep your enterprise ahead of cyber uh, threats. So, so that's what uh, I'm going to be uh, walking you through. And before that, uh, just uh, giving you a backdrop into why did we even think about this solution uh, for our customers on top of the platform? Uh, we've spoken to numerous CISOs and uh, uh, we got to know that, hey, they all struggle with gaining a 360 degree view of their attack surface. You know, what does that mean? Uh, first, uh, they have visibility gaps into their asset inventory. CISOs don't know, hey, have I accounted for all devices on my network? 
the second is uh, they do not know if those assets are being protected uh, or being uh, uh, governed by the right security controls. You know, do am I scanning them with vulnerability scanners? Do I have uh, the right kind of endpoint protection agents on them? And the third is they're making all these investments into security tools, uh, but they still have this feeling that, hey, my threat mitigation capabilities are not complete right now. How do I get a view of how my defenses are working? And what are they doing today? Uh, is that they are either solving for these problems using manual methods like maintaining asset inventory in spreadsheets or building customized solution that maps assets to what controls are running on them or using many point tools that are out in the market. It's easy to go create point tools, but it's hard to kind of, you know, do it in a way where it's operationally less complex for customers to adopt. And that is why we came out with a better way partnering with the technology workflow capabilities that's already you know in uh, the platform today that's already kind of you know customers are have deployed uh, and do it with uh, uh, much more uh, superior outcomes so we will be able to solve for asset visibility and exposure management uh, with the goals of, hey, can we build a as comprehensive asset inventory uh, into all devices in your network, both unmanaged and unknown assets? Absolutely, yes, with, because you already have uh, ITOM discovery and ITOM visibility with all the service mapping capability. Uh, can you identify security controls, uh, whether they are operating on those assets or not? And uh, if they're not operating, uh, are they le leading to elevated uh, risks uh, because of the lack of... Uh, uh, you know, presence of uh, those controls. We can absolutely do that because again, you have those foundations in the form of uh, uh, item discovery and service graph connectors. And finally, knowing whether, you know, you know, are your kind of, you know, mitigation controls in place to protect against vulnerability exploits and threats? Absolutely, yes, because it's the same foundation. So it's a single foundation meeting three goals. You don't need individual kind of, you know, capabilities uh, to meet all of these three goals. And this is where our solution uh, that I'm going to talk about, which is built on the asset intelligence in the CMDB, powered by ITOM, uh, enabling end-to-end -end, uh, actionability of those findings. Uh, there are many tools that will provide you visibility into what's missing, but do they help you close the gap? Uh, this is where uh, the, the power of the workflows in the platform uh, comes to bear. And you know, doing it very close to where there are other security operations workflow where I spoke about security case management and attack surface management workflows being uh, already built into the service now platform through SecOps. You can provide these asset intelligence close to where those workflows are happening, not keep them kind of, you know, away. And then finally, you know, organizations uh, uh, that need to comply to regulatory standards can still demonstrate compliance and their uh, risk management uh, initiatives using uh, this context. This is where Security Posture Control enters, uh, an offering that we've uh, been uh, evaluating with customers over the last one year. Uh, it's out in the market uh, since end of last year. We have many customers who are uh, looking to adopt uh, this particular product. And this is our ServiceNow's play, as uh, Shri called it, the, the chasm solution that provides 360 degree visibility into your uh, attack surface. And chasm is a Gartner coin term that stands for cyber asset attack surface uh, management. And what this uh, capability does is it looks at all of your bank of security and IT tools uh, that you have, be it uh, your EDR tools, be it your patch management or config management tools, be it the Active Directory, uh, be it your hyperscalers, converge those uh, into uh, the CMDB, which is what uh, the foundations of service graph connectors, ITOM visibility, and the multi-source uh, CMDB provides, and, and kind of you know run policy checks on top of those to weed out those gaps. So give you comprehensive visibility, but also gaps uh, on your asset security posture. So with this solution, you'll be able to monitor asset security posture, like, hey, are my tools running on all of the devices? Um, are my devices being scanned? Are there software that's posing a risk on, you know, on these devices? Or any combination of these above, or do they lead to elevated risks? You'll be able to kind of you know, automate radiation workflows once you find an issue, you don't sit on it, you immediately act on it. And you are able to find feed this intelligence into other workflows like vulnerability prioritization. Organizations are dealing with millions of vulnerabilities. 
this tool will help you to kind of, you know, prioritize vulnerabilities smarter with the awareness of, hey, is there a compensated control, uh, uh, you know, part of the asset or is it missing? And then mapping of all these results into compliance objectives, all done on a single uh, platform. So with that, right you now, uh, before I jump into the demo, uh, John, are we ready to run uh, the first poll here? Yes, we are. So the first poll for today is to really better understand how are your security teams really getting the insights into the security tool coverage of your assets as of today. You can select all of the options that apply. Uh, we'll give you a couple of seconds so you can go through them. We're essentially uh, asking you, are you using a, a third-party tool? Are they using a third-party tool or manual spreadsheet exports to understand the coverage or a custom homegrown solution or uh, you're not aware perhaps or they're not monitoring security tool coverage proactively as of today. I see a lot of answers coming in, so please um, make sure that you express your preferences or you reflect your state of the art as of today. You'll see some uh, answers coming in, so I'm going to give extra five seconds and then we can end the poll and share the results. And I'm going to do that now. So as we can see, the uh, vast majority is using a third party tool in case you want to indicate which tool you're currently using. Um, you or third party solution just use the Q&A function. And then some of you are not aware. Uh, some of you are using manual spreadsheet or a custom homegrown solution or very, very little, actually, 3% of you is not monitoring security tool coverage proactively as of today. Then I believe we can keep going with the second poll, which should be right after that one, right, Deepak? Um, yeah, so, so uh, uh, this should be uh, probably after we do some demos, and okay. the audience is some more uh, of this functionality. They'll be in a bit, right. better position to kind of respond and and love the responses by the way. And this is exactly aligned with what we uh, how we see that customers are struggling with third party solutions that are operationally complex because they are operating in silos or they are not aware flying blind or they're using manual kind of uh, you know modes. And this is where the solution can uh, uh, help. So what we're going to do today is actually run through five scenarios and. Um, uh, these scenarios, I'm sorry, right now, let me go back here. Right now, these scenarios will take you through uh, uh, experiences that we've built into the security posture control product. It'll help you kind of, you know, identify tool coverage gaps. Uh, where are you not running CrouchRight, for example? It'll help you monitor uh, for toxic combinations. Uh, are there missing, uh, you know, EDR tools, uh, but also those same assets carrying critical vulnerabilities, the combination of those two uh, is going to be highly toxic for me because they represent an elevated level of risk. Uh, how do I monitor assets against internal security standards if you want all of your, let's say, Windows assets uh, to be running a specific uh, version of uh, a certain uh, tool or be scanned uh, every X number of days, you know, how would you go create a policy uh, uh, to uh, match your internal uh, security uh, rigor? Uh, the fourth is typical kind of a, a scenario where when you have a zero day vulnerability hit you and you want to know, hey, uh, am I kind of, you know, running a certain software, a certain library uh, on a given endpoint? And it's just not being discovered by my scanner sources uh, because they have not been looking for it or they do not have yet signatures to look for it. How will you kind of, you know, get to the picture of your actual uh, risk? And then finally, you'll also see how we can feed all of that intelligence coming from one to four to prioritize your vulnerabilities in the vulnerability response module. So, so if you're all excited to see uh, these fine scenarios, I'm going jump to jump into the demo. All right, I have brought up my uh, screen here. Uh, can you all see my uh, security posture control workspace? I'm assuming yes. Um, so uh, uh, th this is a brand new kind of you know, workspace uh, that we've uh, built uh, that provides you with rich understanding 
of your asset inventory uh, along with the security posture. So in the overview section, you can see the converged inventory of all of your assets right you now that you're managing uh, in your organization. And here, uh, let's say I'm uh, a member of the security team or a CISO, uh, or could be an IT team that's kind of you know, helping my security team, taking a look at this, and I get a comprehensive view of uh, all assets in my environment right now, the monitoring sources of those assets coming from uh, service graph connectors, um, where are those assets operating in, uh, if they're in cloud or, or uh, on-prem. And many of this is coming uh, courtesy of the service graph connectors that you've already activated uh, for your environment. So here you can see the list of service graph connectors. There are many she shared um, a few here. Uh, and if I were to group this by uh, the types of service graph connectors that's lending uh, to that visibility, you can see here are the various categories, vulnerability assessment uh, softwares, config patch management tools, endpoint management uh, tools, uh, cloud providers, networking, and then uh, application performance monitoring tool. And the list goes on. And this list is continuously expanding as we work with many of our technology partners uh, to bring uh, visibility into assets that they monitor and discover into uh, the CMDB. Going back to the uh, security posture control workspace, you'll also see the second section, which is key insights on security posture. And typically the 101 use cases around, hey, uh, am I running endpoint protection on all of the devices uh, that are capable of uh, receiving them? This is where customers are using a third-party solution or spreadsheets or, or flying blind. And you now have a way to kind of you know, figure this out. And this is possible through uh, many of the kind of you know, policies, out-of-the-box policies that we ship that operate on top of the intelligence uh, from these assets. Uh, as an example, you can see here one policy that says, hey, show me all assets missing endpoint protection. So let's dig into this particular policy. Um, and here you can see how this policy has been constructed on looking at all uh, hardware asset classes, looking at where an asset source is reported by uh, uh, or is not reported by an endpoint protection tool, uh, but is reported by other asset sources right now, like Active Directory, uh, for example, or endpoint management, for example. So, so this is kind of honing in on that specific gap. And you can now you know, click on the view findings button to go and say, hey, show me all those assets that are actually missing endpoint protection. And this will take you to pretty much a comprehensive list of assets that do not have endpoint protection running. So if I were to kind of you know pick one record which represents a finding, you can see here that, hey, this has been reported by the extra hop service graph uh, connector, by the Datadog service graph connector, but was not reported by uh, CrowdStrike. So you're having an asset in your environment that doesn't have protection and represents a risk to your enterprise. This is where this finding can then be kind of you know, assigned to kind of you know, teams or can be automated with ServiceNow's uh, capabilities, workflow capabilities to go and fix it right now. So it's not just visibility, it's also the ability to actually uh, act on it. Going back to uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the insights, you can also see toxic combinations here. This is the second scenario where you can now see that, hey, there are assets with critical vulnerabilities. And this is because vulnerability response aggregates vulnerability information on those assets. And we can now see that, hey, there are 287 assets that are actually uh, missing an endpoint protection. So, so this is a, a case of uh, high risk because now you have an asset with a critical vulnerability discovered by Rapid7, one of the popular vulnerability scanners out there, uh, but uh, missing uh, CrowdStrike uh, uh, as a uh, uh, as a tool, right? You know, so here you go, right? You know, you're you're not seeing this being reported by several other sources, but detected by your vulnerability scanner, which is typically the canary in the uh, coal mine. Um, if I were to go back to uh, the uh, uh, the policy uh, section, uh, for example, here you can create your custom policies. Um, so let me kind of you know create a custom policy on a hardware uh, asset where I say, hey, let's say this is reported uh, by Active Directory, uh, for example, uh, but 
um, or, uh, you know, and, you know, specifically on uh, CMDB assets uh, that are running um, Windows 10, let's say. Uh, I'm going to say is running Windows 10 right now. And it does not have, is not reported by, let's say, CrowdStrike, for example. So you can say this and say, hey, where um, you can actually do additional kind of, you know, uh, uh, properties here to actually go look for things that are of interest to you, right? You know, so, so this is a custom policy that you can build uh, to only look at specific uh, kind of, you know, assets based on uh, criteria that you can uh, define. And here, right, you know, here's a rich set of kind of uh, properties that you can actually uh, go look for uh, based on uh, CMDB uh, data. Um, and if I were to kind of, you know, create this policy, you can also create a custom view for this policy because you, you created the policy, but you need visibility uh, for this policy, which is where you can actually draw your own custom insights for your custom policies and show them on uh, the dashboard, right? You know, an example here is uh, AWS Windows Server missing uh, CrowdStrike, right? You now, so this policy, if you were to go in um, and look at AWS Windows uh, Oracle, uh, which was one of the assets that Sri was showing on which discovery was performed, the same asset that was discovered, now we are able to kind of, you know, say that, hey, this was reported by a service graph connector, but has not been reported by these other uh, sources. So, so that's how you would create a custom policy, and then you would also be able to kind of, you know, go create a custom insight uh, on this particular policy. And the creating of the custom insight is is pretty simple, right? You know, you can create a new insight, uh, you can uh, create a comparison chart. You can say, hey, I want to run this on any machine that doesn't have EDR, and you can say no CrowdStrike, for example. And you'd be able to kind of, you know, quickly report on this and you would be able to throw this into the uh, custom insights widget as simple as that. Now let's go back to the policies uh, for, uh, for a second and take a look at other policy types that are acting on deep information in the asset where Shri shared you the, so whatever we've done so far is the outside in view when Sri shared the inside view where we are now able to look into those assets right now. So let's look at one example of that supporting the zero day vulnerability use case right now. So I'm gonna uh, look for, oh, it looks like I just typed software right now. So here you go, right now. I have a policy where uh, I'm specifically looking for any software that's found by discovery, but not found by Qualys right now. And if I were to go into this policy, this policy was constructed on the software asset type instead of hardware, where I'm saying that, hey, this was reported by ServiceNow item discovery, but was not reported by uh, Qualys. And if I were to go back into the uh, custom insights widget, I can see I've cre already created a custom insights for those software that was not discovered by Qualys. Right, you know, and if I were to go look at this finding, and let's say I'm looking for a specific uh, software package that is typically prone to vulnerabilities, which is OpenSSL. Right, you know, and if I look at OpenSSL, I can now see that hey, OpenSSL was not discovered on one of the assets. Now, which is that asset? Right now, I can go in into that software package and see the specific asset on which it was not discovered. Likely a case where Qualys did not scan that asset or Qualys did not have the signature. And it can happen right you now in any signature based uh, you know, product that's out in the market or products that needs to yet add intelligence into it, but not necessarily Qualys. Right? It could happen with any, any vendor tool out there. right? You know? But this is how you would get to find those gaps that represents risk because somewhere a zero day vulnerability is lurking that you are flying blind on. And to the last scenario where all these insights are great, how does this feed into my existing workflows, security operations workflows? So I'm gonna go into the vulnerability uh, response uh, product here. Um, and I will be looking at 
a capability that I have to risk score vulnerabilities uh, with the product right now. So I'm gonna go into the admin section of the um, vulnerability response product and look at risk score calculators here. Now this risk score calculators can drive risk scoring of individual vulnerabilities, um, vulnerabilities tied to specific assets, bump them up or bump them down based on risk that you see. Common risks could be, hey, an exploit is present on that vulnerability. But what about asset intelligence, which is hard to get? Now this integrated capability also offers asset intelligence into vulnerability risk score calculators. Now I can go create a calculator where I can say that, hey, if I have um, uh, a specific uh, condition, right, you know, of a vulnerable software uh, being uh, present or uh, my policy uh, that is kind of, you know, operating on, uh, uh, you know, this particular asset, I can actually kind of, you know, go and create uh, a specific rule uh, for uh, this. So, so if if I go here and uh, and then go into discovered item, let's say, um, and I'm going to go to a specific violated SPC policy, right now, and I say where uh, there is uh, asset missing and bond protection, right now. So I can now say that whenever you find a vulnerability on an asset that is missing endpoint protection, I want you to change the risk score uh, to a 99, for example. You can also do it the other way around, right? You know, you can say, hey, asset, if it's kind of, you know, you know, perfectly fine, it's being scanned for vulnerabilities, meaning you, you write the opposite of this policy, then you can go and say, change this to 50, for example, right? You know, so you can do that as well. Now you have this context of asset intelligence, feeding into vulnerability response workflows in real time. So it's not somewhere out there. You don't have to swivel chair to a different console. You don't have to export into Excel spreadsheets and then import uh, here. You get them directly real time uh, to drive smart vulnerability response. So with that, I'm gonna go back to very quickly a recap right you now of what I kind of you know walked you through uh, here, right you now, or 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 it's time for the second poll, actually, right you now. Uh, John, do you want to run the second poll? Absolutely, we're gonna do right away. So our second poll, I am gonna launch it now. It's focused on, and you should be able to see it now. How are you currently managing remediation of security to uh, coverage issues as of today? Are you do that? Are you doing that manually? Uh, following up with IT Ops team to install security tools, or are you, are you using the ITSM offering from ServiceNow to create a, and track incidents for those issues? Otherwise, are you leveraging automated scripts to install the security agents or uh, restart the agents? Or are you using a combination of manual methods and scripts to install the required tools and devices? See many answers coming in. And by the way, a great job so far from the presenters. Really great content. I see a lot of interaction, especially from the attendees, which is always good to know. And I'm glad to see all this interaction it means that there's definitely a lot of interest in this topic. Now I am going to uh, stop. I'm going to end the poll. And I'm going to share results. We can see that the majority of you is using a combination of manual methods and scripts, followed by those that are leveraging ITSM from ServiceNow to create and track incidents, and uh, followed by those that are manually following up uh, with IT teams. And the, the least um, uh, popular approach is to use automated scripts to install the security agents and uh, restart the agents. So thanks for that. Uh, Deepak, do you have further slides to share? Yeah, I'll, I'll wrap up here, right, you know, so, um, so essentially kind of, you know, what you all saw was how we could easily converge asset inventory using service graph connectors for all kinds of asset classes and manage your tool health, right, you know, and monitor uh, your security posture 
in a real time. You saw how uh, this enables a, a breadth of powerful functionalities around monitoring with out-of-the-box insights, your ability to create custom policies, uh, keep an eye on anything um, using dashboards, driving remediation using of your workflows and being able to easily report off this data using the ServiceNow platform and infusing that into your standard vulnerability prioritization workflows. So here is a picture of uh, the mental model of how vulnerabilities are prioritized and remediated, right? You know, from ingestion uh, to handover to uh, IT, for example, right? You know, and managing all governance and um, uh, any remediation activities within that, including closing of the loop, you're able to do that, right? You know, so um, uh, so that kind of you know concludes uh, you know my portion of the presentation. Uh, I'll be super happy to kind of you know do follow-ups with anybody who's interested in the solution. Uh, John, I believe we uh, will have a survey uh, at the end of it, uh, at the end of the the, the, uh, the webinar that will be sent out to participants. So if anybody would like to learn more, uh, we are here uh, to share more details with you. Absolutely, Deepak. We're going to have a survey now in a few moments. So when uh, you exit this webinar, you'll be prompted out to fill out a short survey, as we said. But before that, uh, don't drop yet because you have a, a few minutes to ask the presenters and the experts here any questions uh, you may have. Maybe I saw Sri, you were answering a lot of questions in the chat as well. Um, is there anything you would like to bring up for everyone's interest? And I think you're on, you're on mute, Sri. Yeah, I think we have some issues, maybe Deepak. However, I just wanted to bring up a uh, couple of idea, a couple of questions that we've seen there. Um, yeah. So regarding there, there was interest in the uh, TLS uh, certificate management from the uh, three sessions. So for all of those that are interested in managing, discovering and managing their certificate requests, certificate fulfillment, uh, certificate automation, we have the certificate. Um, inventory management feature, which is included with item visibility SKU or any SKU that includes that one. Um, and that is available for you to cover um, all those uh, use cases. We now support Acme uh, protocol. So we have expanded our support for our, uh, certificates and you can discover those either via port based or URL or uh, CA, uh, so for, from the certificate authorities themselves. Then we had um, a couple of questions on the install software compliance. Uh, maybe Deepak, you see anything you would like to bring up uh, specifically? Yeah, so, so for a few right. questions that I see uh, from the audiences, like with respect to install software data, the typical package manager is what like every single inventory data sources will use. And ServiceNow Discovery also does that. But on top of it, we have ability to detect a software just from files or the running process fingerprints or by advanced patterns. And there were some uh, nice questions around like how to detect like a software that's run uh, from boot. And uh, there'll be always some kind of a fingerprint that can be uh, used and absorbed. Uh, we launched a service called ITOM Content Services. So if you want deep dive information on this topic, reach out to your sales team and ask for one-on-one uh, -on -one demos, uh, either on SPCs or with the item discovery topic, and we'll be happy to show you the product in live and uh, you know, we can have further exploration. Uh, there's also a lot of questions on uh, the Kubernetes and other uh, estate information, like the breadth and depth of data that comes with the discovery. Uh, sets the foundational bedrock uh, uh, for you to drive those outcomes within the CMDB. Uh, and the multi-source uh, uh, option is super important, especially when you're activating the service graph connectors. And you set the priority on which of those data sources will be your authorized data source. And this can be controlled uh, to the class level and even to the attribute level. Say, for example, you have Botanium, CrowdStrike, SCCM, and you can define like uh, which of those data sources on the endpoint devices will have an authority to uh, override the serial numbers, for example. So you'll be able to uh, know, dictate the uh, leadership board on you know, which service graph connector will have the highest precedence in terms of data. 
So those are all the typical topics. Uh, there's some interest in the service mapping and the machine learning based uh, process fingerprinting. Yeah, we have done some webinars on that topic as well. Uh, service context is super important to drive those uh, critical cyber security outcomes. Uh, Deepak, did I miss anything? Nope, you nailed it, Sri. Yeah, thank you. That is amazing. So I'm just going to keep sharing my screen for the last two slides. Can you see my screen now? Yeah. So just one topic like yeah. uh, this, like questions on licensing on security posture control, whether this is included with the item visibility license, it is not. Uh, it is coming under the security workflow. So please reach out to your account team. As for an one-on-one -on -one discussion on this product uh, called security posture control, either Deepak or Gopi, the product managers, will be happy to have one-on-one -on -one conversation, explain the offering and how we can drive that uh, cyber security program for you. Or to you, John. Amazing, Sri and Deepak, you nailed it, really. Uh, that was an amazing presentation and uh, we already uh, are receiving a lot of interest and uh, great feedback. Now, just a quick reminder for everyone, make sure that you uh, scan this QR code so you can enroll into the upcoming Live on Service Now webinar sessions. If you like today's topic, but especially if you don't want to miss out on the uh, item visibility in the Cloud Accelerate Academy, make sure that you enroll in today so you'll be kept up to date on all our relevant uh, hot topics, uh, what's new, and uh, much more. Especially, I would like you to scan this QR code or access this link that you see right here um, so that, uh, and, and I'm going to try to actually paste it here. I'm going to do something. I will just try to share it in our chat right away. So make sure that you scan that QR code, as I was saying, so that you won't miss the previous episodes. Um, here you will see the um, previous recordings. You will find the previous sessions decks. And uh, you'll be able to access in this way to really um, invaluable resources. So just please keep attending these sessions and suggesting, especially what would you like us to see uh, to show you in the future ones. Again, I really want to thank everyone, Sri, Deepak, and um, uh, Rahul that was in the back uh, providing his support. We really appreciate your efforts, uh, tremendous topics today, and thanks everyone else for attending. This is a really a great engaged audience and we can't wait to see you in the next episode um, uh, we'll definitely wait for you in the upcoming one that is going to be covering our focus on the uh, cloud uh, solutions and you will better understand what do we do there but very likely you'll be already using some of our solutions uh, in the cloud uh, as of now so again thanks everyone for attending uh, we'll be really looking forward to see you in the next episodes and we wish you a great rest of your day. Take care.